You've picked your county. You've priced your list. You've mailed your letters. And then finally, you bought some properties. Inventory is great, but it's all for nothing unless you can sell it. Wouldn't it be great if you could get the customer to sell themselves? Marketing is like throwing bait into the water to attract the fish. In this episode of Land.MBA podcast, we're going to talk about setting that hook and reeling that fish into your sold folder. Welcome to the Land.MBA podcast, where we go deep into the business of land investing. Hey, what's going on today, Howard? Another beautiful day in Connecticut. And I don't know, Dave, if you're aware of this, but today was a very important day in history. And as we all sit here in our coronavirus quarantines, uh, it was a very important day in medical history. How important was it? Have you ever, oh gosh, where's this, isn't it? Have you ever heard of a drug called, where is it? It's called sildenafil. You ever hear of sildenafil? That sounds a little bit like vitamin V. <laughs> well, some, some chemists at Pfizer had, were working on a project to deal with hypertension. And they, find, they finally got it uh, FDA approval on this day. We're recording this on March 27th, 2020. This was March 27th of 1998. Uh, and it turns out it really wasn't that good of a drug for, <laughs> for tension. But it had some other qualities that made it rather attractive in a different market. And you may know it more popularly as Viagra. Uh, so it had bona fide qualities. <laughs> <laughs> Completely changed the world. Now, all the youngsters that are listening to this podcast, they probably you know, wouldn't understand how important this was. But this changed the world. Can you imagine the Me Too movement before Viagra? I, I don't even know how it would have worked. <laughs> but I think you know, this is a really interesting point. For land investors, because sometimes you buy a piece of land and you think it's going to be great for a particular purpose, and you know something's wrong with it, and it you know you find out oh it's actually a much steeper slope than you thought, or it has this other problem, but now you own it. What are you going to do with it? There's always a market. You just got to find the right use for the right market, and before you know it, hypertension turns into erectile dysfunction. Well, that kind of ties into day, today's topic about, you know, maybe a buyer might call you about thinking one thing about the property you have and be totally wrong, but you've got another property to sell them. You always got something to sell. That's right. That's why you want to have diverse inventory. <laughs> <laughs> so today we wanted to talk a little bit about sales and, uh, and I think that um, it's about setting the hook. And so let me let me ask you, Dave. Yeah. You talk to a lot of people. I mean, you've been a, you've been a sales guy, a professional sales guy, your entire career. You've watched people do sales in a lot of different industries, and certainly a lot in land investing because you work with a lot of land investors. What what do you think is the biggest mistake that particularly newer land investors make when they get into the sales process? Well, it's the same thing that anybody new in, in sales makes. Um, there's one golden rule to live by, and that is y you have two ears and one mouth, use them proportionately. <laughs> your yeah. job is to get your client talking. And too many times we want to jump and tell them about this attribute and that attribute, but we don't take the time to find out what their dream is. Is it just me or is it getting harder and harder to count on a job for our financial security? Who would have ever believed that we would go from the lowest unemployment in 50 years to 40 million people unemployed? 
Whether you have a great job and want to create a second income, or you're recently unemployed, you need to check out Land.MBA, your one-stop shop for land investors. Investing in vacant land is a proven business model that can help you build a reliable and scalable second income. Imagine a business where you love what you do. There's no limit on how much money you can make. You can operate your business from anywhere in the world with an internet connection. And best of all, you can never be fired or downsized. If this sounds good to you, Land.MBA provides everything you need to get your business up and running and delivering income quickly. You get education, an end-to-end -end video course and optional coaching to help you get started faster and turn your energy into income. You get tools so you can automate and outsource the busy work and stay super organized. You get access to a thriving community of like-minded investors, which is a powerful way to share best practices and develop potential partnerships for growing your business. And finally, you get access to deal financing, so you never have to pass on a great investment opportunity due to limited funds. Our team has over a decade of real estate investing experience and has the knowledge and experience you need to help navigate any investing scenario. And with Land.MBA, we hold nothing back. Because there are no upsells, you get access to all of our combined knowledge right out of the gate. So don't wait to provide your family with financial freedom. Sign up today for Land.MBA's Soup to Nuts Land Investing Video Course. Just go to courses.land.mba and use coupon code FREEDOM to get 25% off. That's courses.land.mba and coupon code FREEDOM. And let us help you say goodbye to your J-O-B and hello to financial freedom. Yeah, that, you know, it, honestly, it's true in marketing too, but I, uh, I was a consultant for a while and I would work with a lot of startup companies on helping them build their messaging strategy because what would typically happen is founders of startups, uh, uh, they were just so in love with their products. I mean, uh, and I know, I mean, it lands me. I love my product, right? I could talk about it all day long. Um, and a founder can get away with things that other people can't because they founded it, they created it, they, and they, they tend to have a certain magnetism uh, and, and uh, about how they communicate it. And um, But as soon as the organization grows and they need to bring on other salespeople, it all kinds of fall, it falls apart because a hired gun can't communicate the same story in the same way that a founder and a creator can. Uh, and so it was, it's really about now understanding, you know, what is the aspiration of the customer and how can you tap into it? You have to do it at a marketing level, but you also have to do it at, at the sales level. And, uh, and, and it really comes down to stepping back and not being so eager to jump in there and talk about what you have to offer before you really understand, you know, what the customer wants to buy. Absolutely. You know, it's all about doing that, taking that little bit of extra time to do that rapport building. You hear about that all the time. Um, and, you know, I don't care if you're selling widgets or you're selling, you know, cell phones or you're selling um, land. People buy from people they like, first of all, but you've got it. You're selling a high ticket item online. So not only do they need to like you, you need to build a trust. Um, and then as you let them talk a little bit more, you ask some really good questions that really um, make it apparent to them that you care, then they get to know you. And hence you build the know, like, and trust factor. You build that rapport with, with them. And um, you know, you can, you can do that in such a way so that when it comes time to set the hook and close, you've got, you've got no problem asking for it. And, and that, that is a mistake. I also see though, sometimes where, well, you've done all the right things. You've built that no like, and trust. You've built that rapport. You've answered all their questions. You've let them talk. They're ready for you to ask for the close and well, think about it and, you know, call me back in a couple of days. No. What car do you want to put that on? <laughs> yeah. Close them. Yeah. Close them. Have no fear. Yeah, I I, I agree with you totally. And it, it you know, and I, I'm I am absolutely 
I do this myself. I, I love to talk about whatever it is that I'm selling and I would love to connect it with the person. But the fact is, you got to get the person in a state of mind where they're ready to hear the message and hear they're, they're, where they're ready to be sold. I mean, what typically a person calls up and they ask, their, their starting point is they don't know you, which means their starting point is they don't trust you. Um, so they're going to ask, and, and they don't know how to have this conversation. So they, they're going to ask a couple of questions. So tell me about the land. Uh, <laughs> well, and then they're going to try to get you talking, but your job is to just throw it right back on them and say, well, you know what? Um, land is good for, you know, different situations. Why don't you tell me what you want to do with it? And, uh, and let me, let me try to give me a little bit of information so I can help cater, you know, my comments to best suit your, you know, what it is you're trying to do. And you throw it back on them, you get them to talk. And one of the things, one of the tricks that I do, and I have to do it every time because I love to talk and I love to talk about what I'm selling, is before I get on that call, I have to remind myself how much I care about the other person. That I am not asking these questions simply to get to, so I can draw a connection and sell my stuff. Right. Because how many times have we been on we, the receiving end of this and the other person on the other end, you can tell they're reading the questions from a script. You know, they're just sort yeah, of walking like PowerPoint. Through it. Oh, they're just they're just walking you through the script and, you know, they don't give a crap about the answers. They're just trying to get to the end of the script so they can sell you on something. You right. know what? People can tell. They can tell when you care. They can tell when you're genuinely interested. And if you care and if you're interested you can build relationship. And if you, uh, if you ask the questions without caring, they can tell and you won't build relationship. And, but if you can build a relationship and get them talking, you can get them to the place where they're, they're not thinking just with their head anymore, but they're actually talking from their heart. And unless they're talking from their heart, you're not ready to set that hook. I don't think. Right. You're not building the dream. You know, I, uh, you've heard the expression death by PowerPoint, right? We've, uh, most of us have probably been in, you know, some sort of boardroom or conference room where somebody is, uh, giving a big PowerPoint sales presentation was and the they're, <laughs> yeah, they're pitching down to everybody and, and giving them the whole spiel. This is everything our company can provide. You know what? Every person in the room has a little bit different need because they might come from different parts of the company. I'm I'm getting a little bit off track because that's the complex sale. Selling land's not quite as complex as you know selling into uh, a corporation where you've got six or seven different decision makers. But it's really critical to understand the needs of your audience so that now you've got this big PowerPoint instead of going through the whole thing and just vomiting information on them, you, based on the information they've given you, now you can go direct to, to things and point out things that maybe they are interested in. So let's bring that back to land. And if that person has talked to you about, you know, how they want to have a little hobby farm or they want to, to, to have a fishing cabin, things that they want to do, uh, with a piece of land, not even that piece of land that they called you about necessarily. You're just asking questions, letting them talk, figuring out what their aspirations are and what they really, and then you can come back and help solidify that dream and talk about, uh, then you can tie back the things that they mentioned, the points that they mentioned in their dream back to a piece of property that you have. It may or may not be the one that they called about. Right. But now, now you're making a connection. They feel like you really care because you're listening to them and you're, you're tying back and giving them options. Um, when in, in the complex sale, we call that tying back to features and benefits. Well, you're tying back their needs and their dreams to something that you have to offer with one of your pieces of land. Let, let's role play this for a moment, just so we can kind of give an example of how we can improve to the, to the other person that you care and that you're listening. So just, just follow my lead on this. All right. So 
So Dave, tell me, um, what is it you want to do with the land? Well, I'd like to maybe build a hobby farm, Howard. A hobby farm? Yeah. I always thought that would be fun. I want to grow my own food, live off the land. Now, that technique that we just did, which is called mirroring. And by the way, here is the, you know, a golden piece of advice. If you haven't read Never Split the Difference by Chris Foss yet, Stop what you're doing right now. If you're in the car, go right into Google Maps, find the nearest bookstore and go buy this book. It, it, it is a life changer in every regard, but particularly it, it's useful in the land business and the techniques, the actual actionable techniques on how to how to communicate, how to sell and how to negotiate are absolutely phenomenal. And one of the key uh, techniques that he talks about is mirroring. So when Dave said, you know, maybe I, I'd like to build a hobby farm. I mean, frankly, I have no clue what a hobby farm is. You know, I, I, I'm a suburban guy, but um, but it doesn't matter because all I have to do, do is say and, and, and actually, you know what, what what many people do. If you guys have been in, at this for a while, you know that the answer is going to sound more like this. Uh, I don't know. Maybe build a hobby farm. <laughs> and there's absolutely <laughs> no emotion in it whatsoever. Uh, and then you just say, you just repeat those last three words or two words, a hobby farm, a little lilt at the end. So it sounds like a question and then silence. Never be afraid of the silence because silence is uncomfortable. That's why silence we Silence is your friend in sales. It, exactly. Because if we don't fill the silence, they will feel compelled to fill the silence. And when they do that, if you use these two little things on the side of your head, we learn a lot. So hobby farm and then boom, next thing you know, Dave is explaining to me what a hobby farm is and why it's important to him and what he'd like to do with it. And, you know, and now we're starting to get from the brain down into the heart. We're starting to just, and, and, and don't, and don't get too excited. Go deeper. If you think you've gone deep, go deeper, you know, get that emotional, you know, connection because, you know, I, I've seen this is a bit of a technical term, but, you know, there's uh, in persuasion, you can you can persuade people heuristically or you can persuade people logically. Logically is like a data sheet. OK, well, you know, this property, it's a 40 acre property. It's got road access. It's a relatively flat yeah. property with a few trees on it. You know, it's just a bunch of facts, you know, but heuristics is all about, um, you know, basically the emotional side, just to, to be, you know, layman's terms, it's really the emotional side of selling. Um, or as I like to say, logical is, is basically your Spock sale and heuristics is your Kirk sale. Um, the fact of the matter is people buy for emotional reasons and they justify Backstow. the purchase. Yeah. They justify the purchase to their friends and family with logic. So you got to provide both. Yes. But they're not buying because of logic. They're buying because right. of the emotions. Positive they're emotions. justifying it with the logic. Exactly. Now, facts tell, emotions sell. Yeah, I love that. Oh, that emotion was... sets the hook. You know, that, that you can now, if so, and, and now you can use the facts to go back and even if, for example, you get into a situation where they're, they're hooked, they're sold. But maybe they are still um, hesitating on pulling the trigger. So you can go back and justify it to them, back to them using the facts as well. And then you tie it back to that emotional trigger. So, you know, you, you, you had the emotional trigger. You can now say, well, okay, look, it's, it's got the water that, that you needed. It's got the power that you needed. It's, it's the right acreage. Um, so this is going to help. This is everything that you need to build that dream hobby farm. What's at this point, what's preventing you from moving forward? Yeah. And another way, another way to cover that too is say, so, you know, it sounds like, you know, your goal here is this, this hobby farm and, you know, it's got this quality, that quality, that quality, which sounds like it'd be a really good fit. So let me ask you a question. 
because you know hobby farms a lot better than I do. I, I'm not really, I don't know that much about them, but on a scale of one to 10, how, how well does this property fit what you're trying to accomplish? Now, the average person will come back and say something like a six, maybe a seven. They'll never give you the 10. And, you know, and if it, it is a good, I mean, if it's a terrible fit, they might give you two or three. <laughs> they might be honest about it, but they'll never really give you more than a six or a seven just because they don't want to get you too excited. But whatever they give you, let's just say they say a six. Then the question you would ask, the follow up question is, why didn't you give it a four? And now they have to explain that. why that property is better than if they had given it a four. And now they're selling themselves on why this is a good property. Exactly. You get them to sell themselves with the right questioning. Yep. Yeah. Hey, folks, my name is David Van Steenkist, and I've been a real estate investor for over 10 years. I've used lots of different tools, but none of them has done for my business what Landspeed does. Landspeed covers every step in the land investing process from ordering mailing lists to marketing sales and closing the deal. What I really like, though, is it anticipates my needs when I think oh, I wish I had a quick and easy way to evaluate return on investment on a potential property. Look no further, Landspeed does it. If I want to edit a deed after Landspeed creates it, it can do that too. Most systems just stick you with a PDF that's uneditable and you got to go back into the system and edit the fields and do whatever you need to do. And it's a real pain in the rear end. Landspeed simplifies it. If I want to send one or five or even 40 neighbor letters at the click of a button, bam, Landspeed does it. Um, but even with all that inherent capability, you get access to Landspeed community, you get weekly mastermind calls, and you get the best mailing rates in the business with no volume commitment, which is freaking awesome. Because if I just want to pop one contract to somebody, I don't have to pay a buck and a half. I still pay the bargain basement rate. And on top of that, customer service is stellar, quick and they just do a great job. I've been very, very happy, very pleased with it. Uh, and look, I've been running my business on land speed for over two years. So take it from me. If you're serious about your land business, then check out land speed at facebook.com slash land biz automation. That's land B I Z automation. And if you want a hundred bucks off, Tell them you heard it from me, David Van Steenkist, on the Land.MBA podcast. Dave, is there anything more to add to this specific topic? Maybe uh, maybe we should cut it there because I think this was like, you know, pretty meaty stuff. And I, I want maybe some people time to, to think through it and, and reflect upon it. Yeah, no, you know, I think this was great. I mean, uh, we could certainly uh, do more on this, uh, sprinkle it in from time to time. Um, I, I, I love the role play. I mean, th this was completely ad libbed. Uh, and I think we could actually probably deliver some, some, some even better value by uh, maybe planning some of these uh, role plays uh, a little bit better. But uh, I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, I think that is a good place to start. I hope stop. I, I hope you guys got some good actionable nuggets out of that. And uh, hey, leave us some comments if you'd like to hear more of this. We hope you enjoyed this episode, had a bit of fun, and walked away with some actionable insights that you can apply to your business. Dave and I have got some great content and interviews planned, so don't forget to rate and review and, of course, subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. If we mention any interesting links or tools, you'll find them in the show notes. To learn more about Land.MBA, visit our website at, wait for it, Land.mba. See you next time on the Land.mba podcast.